Hello everyone, welcome to another Topaz webinar. Um, I'm Heath Robinson and I'm excited to be hosting again. I'm even more excited to be welcoming back Rad Drew to present with us again. Rad, are you there? Well, thank you again for, uh, for having me. This is uh, my second time uh, doing a webinar with you and I'm, I'm really excited tonight because I'm going to be showing you some different things that, um, uh, that I've been doing with the tools in Topaz and uh, hopefully uh, you'll find uh, some of them useful for what, for what you're doing. Um, before we start, I'm just going to go through and show you a few of the things that um, that I'll be looking at tonight, and kind of where they started and where they ended up. So, this first item that, or this first image that you're looking uh, at is a, um, a dancer from the Cuban uh, International Ballet in Havana, and I started here. Um, this is the before image, and this is where I ended up um, using some textures to um, enhance the the image and give it a painterly uh, painterly look. This next image um, is a still life um, taken in an, actually in an old castle in southern France and um, started with, with this image and ended with this sort of a, an impressionistic interpretation of this still life. And this next one, um, this is a, uh, just a foggy morning uh, in rural France. Um, the image started here and using Topaz texture effects and adjust, I ended um, with this image. And this next one, um, these are right here in my, in my backyard. This is Indiana, the barns that you'll see here from Indiana. Um, I, I shoot with a, an infrared camera quite a bit. I have a small Lumix converted um, to infrared and I've been really enjoying using uh, Topaz to process um, my infrared images. So this is where this image, is, image started and this is where we ended up uh, after processing with uh, adjust clarity and uh, textures effects. Um, this image, uh, another castle from the south of France. Um, Image started here. This is a um, three-shot um, uh, HDR image that's been blended. Um, so I'm starting with the, the HDR result here, um, and through adjust clarity and so on, um, I ended up uh, here. So I've added textures and tried to give it kind of an ominous look um, in that effect. Um, here's another infrared image. Um, Again, started here and ended here. Another infrared image uh, before and after. This is a more of a very high contrast image, um, something that I've been playing around with and, and enjoying. Um, so those are some of the, the, the images that we'll look at tonight. I'm going to start with this one um, of our dancer, Mercy. Um, and the first thing I, I typically do when I'm when I'm doing topaz um, adjustments is to start by um, creating a duplicate layer. This allows you to go back and um, kind of see your your leave a trail breadcrumbs for for you to see where you've been. So when I do that, I label them, and I know in this case I'm going to go to adjust. So I'm going to call this um, topaz adjust. And I'm going to label it one because you can see I've been playing a little bit up here and I've got uh, some other layers here that I've been working on. But I'm going to la label this one. And so now I've got this layer selected and I'm going to go to my filter and select Topaz Adjust. So the, the Topaz interfaces, are a lot of them are, are very similar, if not identical, but um, this one, I'm just going to kind of go briefly through it. Um, over here on the left, you have a, 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 a set of different um, preset collections, and as you click through these, you can see, um, like here's the, HDR, the R, HR, excuse me, the HDR collection, and then down here are the individual presets, and you notice as I'm scrolling through those, you're seeing a preview of them on that screen. Um, so you can easily and very quickly see how each uh, is going to affect your image. The other way you can do that as you select these different um, 
presets. I'm going to go to the classic collection right now. If I go over here to this little grid next to the collection icon, I can click on that and it, it pops up thumbnails of all the different um, presets that are there. So you can very quickly kind of go through and, um, and look at these. Um, for this particular image, as I go through, um, a lot of times what I like to do is pick one of these presets and use it as a starting point because each of these is, um, is editable. You can go in and uh, modify the preset to your liking. So as I go through this, I'm going to select this exposure correction um, adjustment. I like what it's doing to, her, to the tones of her arms here and, and the, her skin tones. And so I'm going to go ahead and, collect and uh, click on that one. And it's applied that um, preset now to my image. Up here, I can click and see the original and click back and see my process version. Um, I can also um, zoom in over here using the uh, magnifier or uh, clicking on the percentage and I can choose from my pick list. I can always go back and fit it to the screen. So it's a great way to, um, to see what you're doing, get a good get a good look at it um, to inspect it. So with this in mind, what I'm going to do now, I've chosen a preset, but over here on the right, if I open up my global adjustments, these are the adjustments that are currently set in the preset I chose. And I could just quit right there and be done and be happy with it, but I'm going to try and do a few things um, in addition or do a few things to it. So. Um, I'm going to play with my adaptive exposure a little bit. I think, wait a second, let me reset this. I'm going to start over, back up, reset that. I'm going to go to my exposure correction again. Okay, so there we go. So I'm looking at my adaptive exposure here in my regions. And I've had this, uh, I've had this explained to me to, to be, it's almost like um, having a, um, a fine-tune um, one-click clarity adjustment. We've seen those um, one-click buttons in a lot of our other applications. Well, this is kind of like that, but you have, instead of one click, you've got lots of different variables along that continuum that you can play with. I'm going to take the exposure value here, and I'm going to move it up to just a little over 30%. I don't usually go too much past that. Then the region slider here, what this is telling us is that this adjustive exposure is going to be applied to how many regions. So at the left end here, it's very few regions. And at the extreme end over here, it's, it's 50 regions. So what I'm looking for is a sweet spot in between. And as I move along this continuum, I'm watching my background here and the line between the, the, the dancer and the wall behind. And I'm trying to find the place that gives me the most separation. And if I hit about right, um, I'm seeing the... Um, the separation between the dancer and the wall, it's almost as if she starts to get a little bit three-dimensional, and that's what I'm looking for. And that's all I'm really going to do in this, um, in this adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. And the thing, the thing I want you to notice about what I'm doing tonight, a lot of these adjustments are really, really small. They're not big adjustments at all, but they do have um, a pretty big impact um, on the final outcome of the image. So now that I've made that adjustment, I'm going to make another layer, duplicate the layer again. And this time I'm going to go to Impression. So I'm going to label this Topaz Impression. And I am going to say OK. And I'm going to go up here to my filter. And go to Impression. So this interface, again, you'll notice it's similar, but it is a little different. Each of these um, tools have been built in different, at different times, and so they have uh, some, some differences. But um, a lot of similarities, too. Over here on the right, you notice you've got a collection of presets that you can click through. And um, as you do, the changes occur um, in your image on the screen. You also have up here on the left several different ways of viewing your before and after image. So right now we're looking just at the final result, but we can also view side by side. You can uh, view um, vertically. You can view horizontally. 
Um, this is a great way to see how the um, the effects are happening and, and comparing it to your original image. Um, I, I like to just keep it on the uh, the full frame, and then you can always click on the the original button and, and very quickly see um, what's going on there. Another little shortcut is that your your space bar on your on your keyboard will also toggle you back and forth between original and um, processed. So in this case, um, a couple other things that I wanted to point out. Um, down here in the left, you have a slider that allows you to adjust the strength of the adjustment that you've selected. So I'm going to just select this colored pencil. Down here, it's telling us that we're applying that at 100%, but you have the option to slide down and reduce that. So you, you can temper the intensity of the effect by using that slider. It's a great way of controlling what you're doing. The other thing that you've got here um, are some of the blend modes that you see in any um, application that, that does blending. And there are just a few here, but you can go through and click through each of these to see um, how they're each going to affect. So just, just quickly, I look at overlay um, or multiply. In this case, I'm going to stick with normal because it's giving me closer to what I want to see. Um, over here on the right, you have a pick list. You notice it says featured right now. I'm going to click on that. And you, have, you can select all of the effects. And then the effects are organized into these um, different categories by, by label. So you've got your impressionistic and painting and pencil and so forth. What I like to do typically, when I'm, especially when I'm new to, new to one of the new tools in Topaz, is look at all the effects. And you can simply um, toggle through them very quickly. I use the keys on my keyboard, the arrow keys, and I'm just top, um, tapping through these different presets to see how they look. Um, and you, you can do that um, to see, you know, until you find a look that's close to where you want to be. Um, in this case, I know that I want to create a, a painterly look, and I've already identified the, the um, uh, effects that I want, and they're in this pencil category. And I'm going to scroll down until I find this. It's a pencil sketch by T Tony Sweet is the one that I'm going to use. So you can see it's um, applying the brush strokes to the image, um, but it's not quite... Uh, where I want it to be. So in order to tailor this to my liking, I'm going to click on this set of sliders in the middle of the uh, of the adjustment set. When I click on that, it brings up all these different panels to work through. So let me close this first one up just so you can see I'm closing, collapsing them basically. So you've got stroke color, lighting, and texture that you can adjust. So for this one, I'm going to open up the stroke and you notice up here you've got a whole different palette of different brush strokes that you could use. Um, I'm, I've chosen this particular preset because I like this light stroke that, uh, that Tony selected for this. So I'm going to keep it at that. Then once you get down into here, you've got all these different sliders. And I'm not going to go through all of this right now, but when you get into this, I, you know, I encourage you to slide them all the way to both extremes and see how they react. Um, and you you can very quickly see how they're going to impact your um, how they're going to impact your image. So what I want to do first of all is kind of play around here a little bit with the brush stroke, and I'm just going to increase it just a tiny bit. Um, you can see a little bit of change in those strokes. Now the painting volume, I'm going to increase it just a little, and now you can also adjust the opacity. Now as I drop the opacity down, you notice the white spots showing up. What's happening is that's actually the canvas behind the paint. So you're you're not allowed you're not you don't have enough paint on your canvas to cover it. So I'm going to go back up here because I don't want those spots um, showing through. I want it to fully cover the canvas. Um, the other thing I'm going to do here is make a stroke variation change. So you've got this slider here. I'm going to move it just slightly I'm sorry, I, want to, I meant rotation. Um, if I go to, to the right just a little bit, see how it changed those? It, they, they're now sort of on a little bit of an angle. I wanted that. I like the way that um, kind of s sort of um, enhances the motion that's already there in the dancer's body and her skirt. So I, I like the way that, that that's looking. So I, I'm going to stay with that. I could also um, vary the rotation. I could, vary, uh, I could uh, in introduce color here. Now, I don't want to do that, but if I do bring this up, 
look at how it's introduced color into the strokes. Now, I don't want that on this image, but there might be some that you would. What I'm going to do is leave this low and maybe just have a tiny, tiny hint of color there. Um, these last two down here, um, oh, one other thing about this I really like I didn't mention. You saw me just zoom in there. I'm using the roller on my mouse just by rolling forward or back. It's a really convenient um, feature in this particular app. So when I, when I scroll in or roll in, um, I can see how the spill is affecting. So spill is just how, it's gonna, how the paint is going to come outside the lines. So if we, you increase it, you've got a lot less clarity. If you bring it back, you've got your paint within the lines. I want to keep it, um, keep it that way with just a hint of um, abstraction going on. Smudge, very similar, but you, you get this blurry, smudgy look. Um, not where I'm going. I'm going to keep it minimal. Um, I like to have it a little bit more um, or a little less of a smudge. Um, let's see. Um, the next thing, um, I'm going to tap a little bit here. I'm going to just, uh, you notice I opened up the color palette. I'm just going to hit saturation just a tiny bit because it will warm up my image since I've got mostly um, yellow tones. Um, and then lighting, um, I want to um, add a vignette to this. I really like using vignettes to direct the, the viewer into the subject. And this is a really um, versatile vignette tool. So as I, I move the vignette slider to the right, you notice all of a sudden we've got now a vignette transition and a centering tool here. The way I like to do these is I, I run the vignette all the way up to the top and then the transition back a little bit. And so now I can see I can see where my um, I can see where my vignette is, uh, even though it's way too harsh for what I want. But now I can begin to open it up and I can see exactly where the edges are going to be. And then once I get the edges the way I want them or in the location I want them, now I can go down to the vignette slider and begin to soften my vignette. And for me, what I like is a vignette that you barely see or barely know is there. So it's just slightly darkening the edges. If I wanted to, I could move the center of this vignette, but for this image, I don't. There's another image later I'll show you where I do like to move that. But for this one, I'm going to keep it there. Just double click on the vintage center text and it will recenter for you. So that's, that's, um, that's everything I want to do on this. I'm going to go ahead now and say OK. And I had, um, that, this is where I landed. I, I had played around with another look and I, I actually added a, a texture, this texture. And I, is that the one? Let's see. Oh no, that's OK. Yeah, so this is where I landed with this image. Um, so that's how, that's how I got to that point on that one. Um, let's take a look at another one now. Um, this is the, uh, the still life flowers at, the, at a castle uh, in south, southern France. And I wanted to make this kind of an impressionistic painting. Um, so again, I start by, um, I, I usually right click. You can use key commands too, but I like to right click on the layer and then duplicate the layer. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to go to adjust. Okay, and I'm going to go find my adjust tool. And for this one, I'm not even going to look at my presets here. I'm going to go right over. First, I'm going to hit the reset button. This is a habit I've gotten into lately because sometimes when you open um, Topaz, it may retain the previous settings from the last time you were in there. So I'm going to hit reset and see, it, it, was, uh, it did change it. So that's always a, a good habit um, on the ones that have a reset button. So I'm going to open up my global adjustments. I'm going to go to adaptive exposure. And I'm going to open this up again to probably about 25 or 30. Notice how it lightened things up. And now I'm going to take my region slider up just a tiny bit. And you can see what's happening. Watch what's happening to the background, the wood in the background. Um, I probably want to go about right, about right there with that. Um, and that's all I'm going to do in here. That's the only adjustment I'm going to make in the adjust, um, Topaz adjust tool. I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. 
So now here's where we started and here's with our adjust. It's just brighter, it's a little bit more articulated in the back here with the, on this panel. Um, and so now we're ready to go into um, impressions. So I'm going to go ahead and um, duplicate my layer again. Topaz impression. And up here. There we go. Um, I'm going to go up here to my my tools here, and I'm going to go to the um, painting. And I'm scrolling down here. The, the tool that I want to use is the Degas Dancer 1. I like the way that it's, um, I like the strokes that it's putting in the textures in the back. I like the way it handles the flowers. Um, if we scroll in, you can see that there's a little bit of um, uh, canvas texture to the image. Um, I really like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up because, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back here. Got a little trigger happy with my mouse, so let's go back to Impressionistic. Maybe it was painter, sorry, wrong place. Painting and Dega Dancers One. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna click on my my sliders here in the middle and go in and take a look. I must have hit a button when I very quickly opened that up. So um, I want to just play around a little bit with, with the brush size to see if I can enhance some of those strokes in the back. So if I if I increase this just a little bit. That's too much. That's way too much. But you can see how some of these adjustments, they, they're very, very subtle. Um, a little bit can go a long way. So that's getting closer right about there is what I want. I want some of this, the colored variation in this panel back here and back here to show up. And that's really just because that's what I like. Um, there's not any right or wrong to it. Um, and that's... That's all I'm going to do with this. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And the last thing I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to go, I could have done this in pressure. I'm going to go into to texture effects. First, I'm going to duplicate my layer again. And Texture effects. And I'm going to back out of that. And again, we've got all of these different presets, but because I know I want to, I want to do two things. I want to um, add a little diffusion to this, and I want to also add a vignette. So I'm going to click up here. Um, there's a there's a button right up here in texture effects that allows you to create your own custom preset. So when I click on that, I have this opportunity to add adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and say Add Adjustment, and I'm going to choose Diffusion. And what this is going to do, I, I really like adding a soft focus effect to some of my images, so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to slide my strength up and my softness a little bit. And because my opacity is at 100% at here, it's, it's putting you know, it's applying full fact, um, my strength and softness. But I want to back that off a little bit. I can come down here with my opacity slider and find the place that's, that's the sweet spot for me. So it's looking about right there for me. I can still see my texture in the background. Um, and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And there we are. So 
so again, we, we started here. We made an adjustment to topaz to liven things up a little bit. Then we went into impression and added the painterly effect. And then we finished it off um, with the diffusion. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do? Um, I'm going to go ahead and make another layer here. I forgot to add um, what I really wanted to do also was, was a vignette. So I'm going to label this vignette. And I'm going to go back into um, texture effects. And again, I'm going to click on the new button up here. I'm going to click the Add Adjustment, and this time I'm going to choose Vignette. Tap on that, and so I can start by increasing my strength and then the size. So again, I want to be able to see precisely where that is. I want to have it be a little more round. Let's see. Yeah, there's no oval to this, but I want it to be a little round, and probably because it's a square. And now I can begin to increase, get it to the size that I want it to be. Um, I can click on the center button and I can, I can move that vignette, move that vignette around a little bit, maybe to about right there. And then I can begin to soften the transition. And again, I like to get it to where I barely see that it's there. Um, and there we go. That's it. I'm going to say OK. And that one's, that one's ready to go. Um, so this next one, um, I knew when I started this, I love the fog and all of that, but I knew I wanted to create a, a real painterly type effect with this. So, um, and, and a heavy texture on it. So I love the mood, and I wanted to just even stretch that further. So I started here by going into Adjust. First, I'm going to duplicate my layer. Go to Adjust. And again, I'm going to come over here to my adaptive exposure, increase that just a little bit. I'm going to drop my regions to see how that's affecting. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to drop the contrast a little too. I don't know why this is. I found that if, if I, when I know I'm going to be laying on a, um, a really intense um, texture, for some reason it seems to, um, I like the effect if I've dropped my contrast just a little bit um, at this in the adjustive exposure um, setting. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. And now I'm going to go to Texture Effects. First I'll duplicate that layer again. There we go. Okay, I'm going to get out of that because I don't want that vignette. So it's so um, so again, as we move through these different effects, um, often go through and just look for the ones that that might get me closer to where I want to be. Um, And I'm going to go ahead, let's see, let's go ahead with this one. And I think this is, there we go. All right, so 
I'm going to open up my basic adjustments. So, so one of the things I wanted to mention here, so we've just chosen this preset called Retro Streets. It's already made up for us. You notice this little eyeball right here on all of these different um, adjustment layers. If I click on that, it turns it off. So with one click, I can turn that off and see what effects are being applied by that particular layer. So I often um, with these, I'll go through in the beginning and just click each layer to see um, what that layer's, what effect it's having on the image. So some of these, like here's film grain, when I turn that off, it's a very, very, very subtle change that I'm seeing there. Whereas with basic adjustments, it's a pretty, pretty big change. So um, I'm going to go in here and um, I'm going to adjust the clarity a little bit. I'm going to drop saturation. I'm going to pull this down to get a little more blue. Uh, I'm going to bring this up this way. And my brightness I'm going to pull down. And opacity, um, if I bring that down, I'm pulling back a little bit of the detail in this, in this darker area down here. Um, so now, I'm gonna, and, and I'm just closing those with this little arrow right here. I'm going to close that layer. Now I'm going to go into the texture layer. And um, this is where, where's my layer here? So each of these, you have a, you have a whole different um, array of different textures. And for those of you who use um, things like um, uh, Totally Rad, Dirty Pictures, uh, no relation, by the way, um, or oh, what's uh, there are some other texture packages, you can actually, if you've purchased other textures, Topaz allows you to import those into, um, into Topaz so you can use this. So, some of these that I have in here um, are from other sources. I'm going to pick something a little different and play with the opacity there. Um, I'm going to increase the detail. I'm going to saturate it a little bit. So what we're going to get is a little bit different than the look of the one that I showed you, um, which I have to admit can happen a lot. If you might see something different. So. I'm dropping the, the changing the color strength here, saturation. So we've got a lot more color in this one than we did in the one that uh, that I ended up with before. Um, I believe. Let's see. We can also change our our, our tint here if we want. Um, but I kind of like I kind of like where it is there. One other thing that I want to show you that you can d use. So we're using this texture right here. You can also flip these textures over and around. So Right now, if I flip this texture, just watch what happens on the screen. It's just flipping the texture over, so it's um, showing you what's over here is now on this side. You can do it horizontally as well. And then the other thing that I like about it is you can also size the texture. So I can increase, see how it's growing? So you can, if you've got a light spot or some, some texture artifacts that you want in a certain place, you can kind of use those features to help you get it there. The other thing you can do, and I'm going to do that here, you've got this move icon. If I tap on that, I can come over here now and I can move that filter. See there, I'm taking it completely off the picture. What I want to do though is I want to put that brightness behind the tree. So I'm kind of sliding it around so that that, that tree is sort of haloed by the back, by that uh, texture. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And there's our, um, that's a different result, but it's also, um, okay, hold on, I just hit, here's the, um, here's, the, here's the one that I had originally um, found before using a different texture and outcome. Um, they're different, they're both different, but uh, that's one of the things that I love about this tool. You've got so many different options to, uh, to do. Um, okay, so I want to get into um, some of the ones that I've done with um, my infrared. Um, so here's where I start with the infrared. This is what comes out of my Lumix um, converted uh, camera. 
And the first thing I do again is I go to um, I go to adjust, so I duplicate a, a layer, and adjust. And I'm going to go in here to my adaptive adjust, and I'm going to bring this up because one of the things I want to do with my infrared is I really want to darken those skies. Um, but I'm also going to play with my regions a little bit. Now, if I bring this way up, it starts getting real HDRE, which is not what I want at all. So I'm going to keep my regions kind of low here, right around there. My contrast, if I drop that down, it takes a little of that HDR business out of there too. That's real close to where I want. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Again, very subtle adjustments, but they're getting me closer to where I want to be. The next thing I'm going to do then is um, I'm going to do clarity. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to go to clarity. Where are you? There you are. Now again, there, the, all these presets exist over here for you to explore um, to find you know, a point that's close to what you want. Now notice how this came in very harsh. I'm going to hit the reset button and take it back to zero here so that I'm starting with a fresh, um, fresh slate. Again, I'm going to begin to work with uh, these micro, low, and medium contrast settings here. And I'm going to be able to intensify that a little bit more the way I want. And then if I drop my high contrast down a little, still a little bit too HDR. So there we're getting very close. That's um, I like what's going on in the sky and the darkness in the sky. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now we've gone from, from here to here. And what I may do now, and in the end, one of the things, again, I like to do that soft focus. So I'm going to duplicate that layer. Um, and this time it's going, I'm going to do um, texture. Go to my texture effects. zero that out and I'm going to go over here to my custom settings and I'm going to add diffusion and again I'm going to add that a little softness to this image and that's probably too much back that off a little bit now I can play with the slider over here and find something in between so about right there so I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and there's our, there's our final. So again, we started here, and we ended here. Um, I'm going to do another, um, another uh, infrared image, because one of the things I've been playing around with is a real high contrast effect. And um, so this is where, where I'm starting. Again, this is right out of the Lumix camera. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my layer, and I'm going to start with adjust again. And there we go. I'm going to reset that. Just there we go. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to play with my adaptive exposure. I'm going to bring that up to about 30. And my regions. I'm going to increase that. maybe about right there, and my contrast there. That's all I'm going to do, very subtle. I'm going to say OK to that. And now, this next adjustment, I'm going to duplicate a layer again. This time we're going to go into um, um, clarity. And there's a... Um, texture effect and clarity that I've been using that I, it's, 
so it might be too much for some people, but I like what I like what I'm getting with it, and where it's taking me down with these um, some of these infrared images. So what I'm going to do instead of looking, for, there's a preset that gives me really black sky, but I'm going to go over instead and just work on work on it here, and I can do the same thing. I'm going to run this up, and notice how it's really darkening my sky. My contrast here, I don't, I don't necessarily want to bump that up too much, but part of what I'm looking at in this image, you notice the shadow of the tree on the barn, and there are little, some little areas where the light's coming through the tree. That's one of the things I'm trying to enhance and preserve in this. So, again, I'm getting a, a really um, deep black in the skies, um, and then the, the contrast in the grass in the foreground is getting more intensified, too. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And there we go. Now this is another one that I might go ahead and add just a tiny bit of um, uh, softness to it to give it kind of a glow where I, where I ended up um, with this one. Um, you can see how the softness adds a little bit of um, nuance, uh, maybe nostalgia to the image. And that's a lot of what I try to go for. Um, thank you so much for having me again. It's really fun to do this. And um, anybody, if anybody has any questions for me, I invite them to uh, email me through my website or, or get in touch with me through Facebook, whatever. I I'm, I'm love talking about this stuff, and I'm happy to share what I know. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Rad, for uh, taking the time out of your day. I know it takes time to prep these images and uh, quite a bit of time to dedicate to actually presenting the webinar. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, if you'd like to follow Rad, you can follow him at raddrewphotography.com or facebook.com forward slash raddrewphotography. And if you have any questions, you can always contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com. Or if you'd like to register for upcoming webinars, you can visit topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you very much, Rad. I appreciate your time. Thanks, everybody, for coming to watch. We look forward to seeing you in future webinars. Thank you very much.